this is the second set of comments on external measure and um, the results which we prove in these comments will be uh, of crucial importance to the next set of videos which will establish the extension theorem the bag the bag extension theorem for measures so again i just recall quickly the setting we have a semi ring the semi ring and the measure this is the way we define the external measure so it was the infimum of all possible of all possible so a here is the subset of your universal zx and ak is a covering not necessarily disjoint but the covering of your set with the elements of your semi ring and the external measure is the infimum of all possible sums like this where the infimum is taken over all possible coverings uh, I'll again present you the epsilon version of the infimum definition uh, it says basically this that uh, the external measure of a set is always less than the sum of the individual measures for any covering it's on one one side on the other side uh, if you fix an epsilon bigger than zero then there is a covering which is still individually if you sum the measures individually individually it would be larger than the external measure but not much larger only by a marginal amount given by this epsilon that's the definition of the infimum, which I repeat, and that's the definition which I presented also in the pre preceding comments. Now, two properties which I want to present today in these comments is this one. First one, it says this. Actually, the question which I haven't addressed yet is that um, we haven't really asked the question when this number is actually a finite number, when this infimum delivers something finite. And that's the first property which I'm going to quote now will answer this question. It says this, if the universal set comes or falls within the scope of the minimal ring enveloping your original semi-ring, then look what happens then. Then, uh, then the universal set X has a disjoint representation like this, where A1 and AN came from the semi-ring. This is the description for the minimal enveloping ring we discovered with you earlier. So if X is such, then whichever subset, whichever any other subset of your universal set you take, this N subsets, A1 to AN, will always produce a covering, which means in this infimum there will be at least one covering which delivers, which, which, uh, which fits into, this, into the scope of this infimum, and that is that that concludes that helps me helps me to conclude that actually the external measure will be a finite number that's the way i will always i will sometimes write this statement that something is a fine is a finite number so this condition that the universal set comes from the or can be fit into the minimal enveloping ring of the given semi ring ensures that external measure always delivers a finite number for any subset of your universal set. Now, the second property which I'd like to address is this one. It says, if your original measure M is sigma additive, remember, uh, something I haven't discussed yet, uh, this M originally was just a measure, we haven't required anything beyond that, but if my measure is sigma additive, then I can also say that the M tilde of B is equal M star of B, and I'll explain the symbols in a second, for every element of the minimal enveloping ring. Now, I have to call to your memories, M tilde is the symbol which we use to denote the extension of my measure M onto the minimal enveloping ring. That was a unique extension, and this, is, this will be a sigma additive extension, in fact, because the original measure is sigma additive. M star is my external measure so the statement is in fact saying that if your original measure is sigma additive then on the minimal ring enveloping s your external measure coincides with the natural extension of your original measure 
look how we're gonna how we're gonna see that. First, uh, observe that if V comes from the enveloping ring, it has this representation, this disjoint representation by the elements of your original semi ring. That's a description which I remember I mentioned it here once, but that's a description we established earlier. Now, what I'm saying actually is that this B, given with this joint representation, now what I'm saying actually is this, that this joint representation in fact saying that this collection of subsets is a covering of the set B in this sense. So it, we don't, I don't know, there might be some other coverings for this B in this sense, but at least one covering is this one, which means that at least when I compute this infimum, at least one number here will be the sum of the individual measures of these Bs. And so this says to us that the because infimum is this number is less than the sum of these individual measures for all possible coverings, in particular for this covering. So we see something like this. Uh, the external measure less than the individual the sum of the individual measures for this particular chosen covering. Now, if you remember how we extended our measure to the minimal semi-ring, that was the extension, so this is just a definition of this M tilde measure, and that's how we get the inequality that M star less than M tilde, less or equal than M tilde. Now, our job will be to establish the inequality in the other way. For that, I will fix an epsilon bigger than zero, and for that, I will also fix a covering like this, such that this inequality happens. There is, so it's a covering by the elements of a semi-ring with the extra property that the external measure of my set B bigger or equal than this individual sum of the individual measures take epsilon set here. Now what I say is this actually that I can start with this set identity that the set B is a subset or in fact in fact, it's not. A, it's, it's more than a subset. It's actually I can say it is just equal. It was a subset of this covering. So if I just make it finer, if I intersect every a k with b, it will be just the identity. Although a formal check of this identity requires a careful analysis, and I'll leave it for you to think about that. Uh, if I have this identity now between sets. Remember each element here individually, it's the element of my minimal enveloping set and the, this countable union, although it's countable union and although this is just a ring, it's not closed under the countable unions because we have equal sign here and this B element is from minimal enveloping ring. I can use what we called earlier semi-additivity. Semi-additivity of this M tilde measure on this ring and according to the semi-additivity, we established this property earlier, the tilde measure of this B less or equal than the sum of the individual tilde measures of these intersections. Now, these intersections individually, um, they, or the measures of these intersections individually, they are less or equal than the measures of AKs alone, because it's a subset of this AK, and when you move on to the larger set, measure only gets bigger and it only gets larger. Now, on AKs, because AK can come from the semi ring, M tilde measure coincides with the original M measure. So, this is just this. And this sum we can estimate from here, at this point, by M star of B plus epsilon. Look what we just come up with. We started off with the M tilde of B and we ended up with the M star of B plus some epsilon. But epsilon was arbitrary positive number with no restriction, so we can push it to zero. And that will make the equality m tilde of b less than m star of b, less or equal than m star of b, which is the opposite to this inequality. Com if you combine it with this inequality, you will end up with the identity. And again, I draw your attention that sigma additivity assumption on my original measure m played a significant role here because we used semi-additivity of the extension m tilde measure.